Kendrick and you like were friends. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar shouted out Lecrae. And exchanged numbers and we're yeah. chopping it up. And I was yeah. like, okay, like he's really in this world now. This is now post church close. Yeah. And you're starting to get some, some notoriety, right. starting to get some visibility. I remember we were a South by Southwest together and we watched a Kendrick panel which yeah. was very interesting because Kendrick, you know, Kendrick's like super mysterious now and he's never <laughs> on social media. Do you remember what that panel was about? I don't even remember. It was about leveraging social media. Wow. Do you remember what he talked about? I have no idea. He talked about sharing his personality on Twitter by talking about his favorite cereals. Yo, that's, your memory's crazy. Bro, so I just remember thinking like, first, because because I, I had heard Kendrick's music at that point, but I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. Because I had heard uh, Ignorance is Bliss and I would heard these different things. And I was like, oh, it was clearly he was like the next one up from the West Coast. This is yeah. this might be 2011. This is before this is definitely yeah. before Good Kid Mad City. Yeah. And I remember sitting there listening to it's like, oh, this is this is he's he's rather profound in his leveraging of social media to get his messaging out. And, and it's so interesting. Si like. Side note, That's how interesting crazy. it was that Kendrick was giving advice on how artists should use social media to get the, to get the word out. And I don't need right, That's right. Crazy. And I remember talk, I remember I asked the question about like, how did they go from, you know, scaling locally to uh, regionally to to globally? You and, would have a question. Yeah, I did. Because they were talking about being at the Compton Swap Meet, selling their yeah. CDs yeah. And, and, and getting the word out that way, right? The, the, the days of CDs and yeah. mixtapes, right? Yeah. And so I remember that moment. And I remember right after that panel, we came out and like, Kendrick and you like were friends yeah. and exchanged numbers and we're yeah. chopping it up. And I was yeah. like, okay, like he's really in this world now and there's a connection that's happening. And it, and it only just kept scaling and scaling. I think Kendrick was in that church close video, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. There was like a drop from uh -huh. him in the very beginning. And I, and I started like, oh, wow, this is, this is awesome. Like this is, I was like, this is great. Like this yeah. is amazing to see that. Now, fast forward, when do things become so big where you're like, oh, like, where's that next pop? Where's that next like? Uh, was it was it the um, the record anomaly where you're doing was that seventy five thousand first week? Which is if, those are incredible numbers back then. Yeah, those are good numbers now, but back then it was like, whoa, oh, yeah. it's the number one rap record in the country. It's twenty fifteen ish. Yeah. Um, well, do you remember a point where you were like, okay, like things are a bit different now? Yeah, I I think it started to feel that way. Because Gravity was the number three album in the country. Number three was That's crazy. That's right, yeah. Gra Gra Gravity was big. I yeah. remember that, yeah. Gravity was number three. And the things we had accumulated, like we got a feature from Big Crit mm -hmm. on Gravity. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, shoot. We got a Big Crit agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. Which is a whole nother sidebar. He's so scarred from doing mm -hmm. that record because he was assaulted by Christians. Mm -hmm. But um, that was when it was like, okay, this is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, making the trips to L.A., being in circles. When I had Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne's managers trying to sign me, it was like. You talking about Tez? Tez, but yeah. but also Al Branch and them. Okay. Like, they were like, yeah. yo, man, we, we want to, let's, let's, let's talk about doing a deal with mm. you. And it was like, okay, y'all want to sign me to be on your, you know, so it was yeah. like. Stuff started getting a little murky and strange. And the good part was like the inroads that were being made, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of new opportunities. The bad part was I think Satan used those wounds mm -hmm. that I had of not feeling secure, not having a family mm -hmm. to really like create this narrative in my mind that I needed to find a tribe. Mm -hmm. And so I was now like bitter toward the people who had first embraced me. And mm -hmm. I was like, and some of it might've been their jealousy. You know, some people have admitted mm -hmm. they were jealous mm -hmm. in the past. Um, but then it was like, I kept getting like hit up from folks like, why you ain't put me on or why I'm not in this? And why wait, you wait, didn't wait, do wait. that? People overtly asked you why oh, you ain't yes. put me on? Wow. Oh yes, big time. Wow. Like, yo, why you ain't put me on? Like, you ain't my real friend if you didn't repost my joint. Mm. Like, you ain't give me no feature, bro. Like, mm. you, we family. Why mm. you ain't, you well, know? I like the record to show that I, I did get a feature in that window. <laughs> I had to finesse it. Do you remember this feature moment? I, was that I the had, song with JR? 
No, that well, you yeah that that you that was early. That was 2011. So okay, you okay. you did you did me a solid. Then you showed up in a music video. Like that was really cool of you. We, I think yeah. didn't, didn't we record your verse in oh, Southeast in, Dag in, Southeast in a garage. In a garage. That yeah. was um shout out to uh, David's Harp Foundation. Yep. They went, ended yep. up becoming a really dope nonprofit. That's dope. But I'm talking after that, we did a record that was, was may, may have gone on church clothes. It didn't make church clothes. Oh. And then Joseph P. Yep. Got me to vocals, but you had used a couple of the bars, yep. and I had to like finagle it and like kind of me, I like made it sound like me and you was going back and forth. That's right. And you guys clear the record, and this is like 2013. This yeah. is stuff is really starting to pop yeah. off, and I remember yeah. like, man, I don't know if they gonna let me get get nah. this record off, you know. And but but I got Joseph did that, and then it came out, and then everything was. I think it even did decent at like Christian radio or something yeah. like that. Well, what's interesting about that is that was a time period for me where I needed. Y'all, I needed prop. I needed people who, cause I, cause people would ask me, yo, who's dope out here? And, and there was a little bit of shame of like the quality of Christian rap for me. Back then. Yeah. Back then. And yeah. so I, I was like, I, I only want to tell them about people that are lyrically dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the standard at that point in time was not how good your, your, your rapping was or how, dope your music was it was like does it minister mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so it's like hey is this preaching like is it yeah. a pre is it a sermon yeah and the music could be good but it was so on the nose right theologically right that it wouldn't that that like if you don't if your ears aren't attuned to understanding what we're talking about it's instantly gonna yep turn people off yep. and at the same time in hip-hop you have this is the explosion of kendrick cole yes. and drake this yes. is the like the the the, the quote unquote big three yeah there's a shift happening where music is coming out of the 2000s and into the 2010s and then rap is rap matters substance matters yes. lyricism matters yes. cadences matters now yep. because the big three rappers are, are rapping yeah rapping yes rapping. yeah that's that's that, that that's helpful yeah anyway go go ahead no no, no i'm just saying so i needed y'all so i would have done anything for y'all yeah. that especially at that time period it was like because I would have asked for more favors had I See? had I known that. <laughs> because I was like, I need Why'd you put me on? I needed to feel like I wasn't alone. I yeah, needed yeah. to feel like, nah, we a movement. It's yeah. a Wu Tang behind yeah, me. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And so it was like, that's probably why you would hear me highlight Andy so much mm -hmm. during that time because we were kind of on the same wavelength, yeah. like same yeah. type of thought process. Yes. And I was like, yo, I'm not on this super didactic beat people over the mm -hmm. head mm -hmm. type of vibes right now. Um and, and again, I don't know what I'm I've never been here before. Mm -hmm. I've never been like I'm on Sway, I never been on Sway. Mm -hmm. I Jimmy, F I don't know. Yeah, I remember what late this... night looks and all yeah, that. Yeah, I'm crazy. like, this is new to me. Yeah, yeah, and people yeah. are like, yo, why didn't you say this or why didn't you do this? And I'm like, bro, I have never been here before. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this. I am the most nervous I've ever been is being on Jimmy Fallon. Mm -hmm. I've never been more nervous. I'm like, this is live. If I get this wrong, mm -hmm. what do I say? These people are thinking. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? What is my audience thinking? What is my fan base thinking? What is this? All these things running through my head as a human. And that's when the environment just shifted. And it's like, yo, this is another planet. And I'm trying to adjust in real time. Yeah. And there's so many expectations on me, just like. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. This is just a clip from our entire podcast, which is available right now on Patreon. You can sign up for a free seven-day trial to get access to this podcast before it goes live, as well as all of our future podcasts and exclusive segments that are only on Patreon and are a little too spicy for YouTube. So here's a little preview of this podcast and what you can expect. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace. But I don't want the curated Lecrae. <laughs> I don't want the media train Lecrae. I want the, the Lecrae when it's just me and him in the studio. Yeah. It's late. That's when the bitterness started to creep in. Mm, That's okay. when you started hearing the like sidelines records where I'm like going at people and like talking. Y'all, can call me mm -hmm. and y'all ain't calling me. Y'all just talking about me crazy. Mm -hmm. The weed's passing around. Why not? You know, who cares? Man, that's dope, man. You smoking weed and, and your song Blessings. Like, I rock with that. And it's like, in my heart, I'm like, yeah, I just remember looking at that like, yo, this is not the fruit of the spirit. Who is your pastor? Like, this man. is crazy. And the accusations yes. revved up yeah. against you. Yeah. But to be fair, was there ever a part where you felt like maybe you did kind of go a little too far into that. Kendrick and you, like, were friends. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar shouted out Lecrae. And exchanged numbers and we're yeah. chopping it up. And I was yeah. like, okay, like, he's really in this world now. Bruce Lawn.